This episode of the Dungeon Cast is brought to you by Miniature Mashup. Do you like cartoons about D&D? Miniature Mashup is a YouTube channel featuring the animated exploits of some of the world's worst role players and dungeon masters. But it's more than that. There are also cartoons fleshing out D&D magic items, instructional videos for building affordable terrain and miniatures, miniature reviews, painting tutorials, and more. Miniature Mashup is just a fun place for tabletop gamers to have a laugh and maybe learn something. You can watch Miniature Mashup on YouTube or check out their Facebook page. Hey everybody, welcome to the Dungeon Cast. I'm Will. I'm Brian. This is the podcast where we talk about everything Dungeons and Dragons, from nude ninjas to noxious nobles. And today, we're covering nightmares and we're covering Pegasi. All right, Brian. So today we are rounding out for the foreseeable future all equestrian lore. Oh God, this is this is it. <laughs> this is it for a bit, unless some other horse monster comes up that I don't know about. Does it have four uh, legs and sound like? Yeah. It, well, it does when it's not flying. <laughs> so so yeah, we're gonna cover Pegasi. And we're gonna cover nightmares today, um, and let's start with Pegasi. So wait, hang on. Nightmares a horse? Or like, nightmares a horse? Not your dream place. Not, not your my bad, dream place. Not your bad dream place. But we'll talk about that later. Let's start we, with Pegasi. We're gonna talk about your dreams today. Uh, no, we're gonna talk about nightmares. But oh, later. The horse. The horse. The horse thing. Indeed. Okay. So Pegasi. Uh, D&D Pegasi are based on and named after the Greek mythological winged divine stallion of the same name. Mm. Uh, fun fact, Pegasus is the name of a particular character from the story of Perseus and not the name for the species of creature. Uh, what we commonly refer to as Pegasi or Pegasus uh, were originally in ancient Greece called terep- Terapis or Terapi. Okay. I didn't yeah, know that's, that. That's yeah. That's the name of the species. Pegasus was the proper noun for the actual terapi in the story of Perseus. So that was just like the horse, the horse, steed, the steed's name. Yeah, we exactly. refer to it as a steed. If, if, if it had been named Stephen, we would be calling these things Stevens. <laughs> I, I wish they were named Stephen. <laughs> now you said that. Um, so, so go ahead. Uh, I'm sure you're going to get into it. Are they uh-huh. domesticated versus wild? Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get into it because okay. uh, peg, Pegasi, by the very nature, are very wild. And it's very difficult to I mean, tame yeah, them. It's a horse with wings, man. It's a horse pretty with fucking wild to As me. a matter of fact, they're pretty much untamable, but we'll get to that. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, so another fun fact about the whole Greek mythological uh, Pegasi is, depending on the version of the story being told, Pegasus was actually a demigod. Uh, In the similar vein to the way Hercules is a demigod, Mm -hmm. basically uh, Pegasus was originally born from the blood of Medusa and the sea foam of Poseidon mixing. So basically Poseidon had like a hand in in Pegasus's birth. Okay. Now. um, Do remember something like that. This gets lost. Um, in the the more modern editions of D&D, but back in first and second edition, there was a 5% chance that beheading a Medusa would spontaneously birth a Pegasi. <laughs> <laughs> and I just think that's amazing. Roll a D100. Yeah, exactly. Roll a D100. <laughs> yeah, so you get a 95 or better. Oh, Pegasus. shit, where did this thing come from? It's like doves out of magician's sleeve. It's exactly. It's a giant winged horse. I just thought that was pretty fun. And, and, and a nice tip of the hat to the ancient lore. So The barbarian quits his rage after the fight. He's like, oh, thank God. And a fucking horse tramples him and he goes down <laughs> sure yeah that's one way to go <laughs> that's hilarious <laughs> so D and D Pegasi are essentially majestic and magnificent winged horses, often depicted as pure white, but not necessarily uh, that color. That can be any variation of horse color. Mm-hmm. Uh, depending on the edition, uh, Pegasi may have feathered manes and tailed ra- tails rather than haired ones. I've seen cool. images. If you open up the three point five monster manual, it's a really cool look. Like, uh, are, are we talking like? Like, I always pictured the wings as feathered, yes, you know, like yes. angel wings almost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Would the rest of the horse kind of mimic the same, like, wing so feather type, like the, the Im- pattern? Um, so the images that are in Monster Manual for 3.5, yeah, I would say the feathers are, are they're just like the wings feather, wing feathers, but um, they're just the mane and then the tail are all feathers. Nice, And everything else cool. is just horse hair. That's pretty sweet. It's I've, a pretty cool look. It's almost kind of Jurassic, Jurassic Park-ish, the way they put the, the feathers on the dinosaur. Like, yeah. I guess not just Jurassic Park, but like more just, modern version. Yeah, uh, or more modern interpretation of what dinosaurs probably look yes. like. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Yeah, it's very similar cool. to that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, um, Pegasi are <clears throat> magical beasts considered to be of a celestial nature. Ooh. Um, their origins are traced back to the Olympian Glades of Arborea, which is the chaotic Goodaline plane, um, the polar opposite of the, of the abyss. <clears throat> 
Um, there they serve the Elven Pantheon, the Sildarian. Oh, nice. In their realm of Arvander. So Arvander is just one layer of the greater plane, which is Arborea. Is it like, uh, is it, can I picture it like in the Marvel uh, cinematic where like the Asgard? Valkyries? Yeah, Asgard. I mean, I think you could. Um, but Arvandor and Arborea are very chaotic, so I think it's very changing. Okay. Well, Asgard, I think, is more like Mount Celestia, where it's like very, not stagnant, but very strongly unchanging structured structured if yeah you will, yeah. okay so like <clears throat> I, I was definitely thinking like can you ride a pegasus into mount celestia would that be like a cool way to access it yeah i think so yeah i think so um but again like they're like there magical are... in that kind of way where they could like cross the plane yeah but at the same time pegasi would still be limited in going from layer to layer on mount yeah. celestia like, a, like how every like mortal thing kind of Ex- would be yeah exactly mm. so uh not all pegasi live in the outer plains some have made the prime their home but uh they're really exceptionally rare creatures like seeing one really is an event and they're okay. just very very rare or are they solo or are they flocking um mostly solo but they oh. do mate for life um yeah we'll get into that so you see like a like a two two big silhouettes and like a little one yeah you yeah. can see that yeah absolutely Aww. that is everybody great. in town's like oh we've been blessed <laughs> yeah that's quite adorable and i think a town would be like oh yeah that's a good omen <laughs> um besides their appearance the appearance of pegasi like physiologically they actually don't share much else in common with actual horses um the first major difference is their intelligence level uh, they have an intelligence level equal to or greater than your average human um, no, what? Yeah, they're very, very smart creatures. And though they aren't capable of speech, with the exception of like a particularly powerful Pegasi might be able to speak telepathically. Oh, man. Um, cool. D- despite not being able to speak, they can't, are capable of understanding multiple languages. Usually it's Celestial, Sylvan, Elven, and sometimes Common. But those first three for sure are definitely what they're able to understand. There's an experimental lab in Mount, at the base level of Mount Celestia, and there's a bunch of uh, there's a bunch of bipedal pegasi in lab coats, just like psychically talking to each other and like pouring shit into beakers, like sure. very slowly with their hooves. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess they have the intelligence level. Why not? <laughs> they just don't have the dexterity. Yeah, they don't have it. the dexterity. They don't have the opposable thumbs. The only time they talk is when they drop a beaker. They're like, "Damn it! <laughs> Damn these so, hooves!" So. So being creatures of the plane of Arborea, Pegasi are inherently and distinctly chaotic good. Like, it's just inherent in their nature. Uh, they desire to live wild and free, spending the majority of their time soaring through the skies, uh, lingering on land, on land only for quick moments for eating and drinking. Like any good stallion. Yeah, they're not a violent species, but they will not hesitate to attack an <laughs> evil creature that provokes them very, oh. very viciously. Oh, nice. <laughs> I was, like, I how was, dare you provoke me? I was positive you're going to say they will not hesitate to just kick the shit out of anybody that touches them on the backside. <laughs> well, I think, yeah, they that probably too. would do. They yeah. would definitely do that. Yeah. <laughs> so are they OK? Are they ahead, like um, are they omnivorous? Are they um, vegetarian? They are. They like are herbivores. They oh, okay, are herbivores okay, okay. For sure. Can you imagine those things? Sorry. Yeah, this guy to eat meat. Like, Jesus. Well, I, I imagine them doing like a really cool like like back flap to reverse mm-hmm. into like a back kick. Like they just kick a bird out of the sky and then go eat it. Yeah, I mean, I'm, <laughs> just like, they Dah. are capable, but no, they generally don't eat. Just like, they don't harm others. It's like a speaking. feeding frenzy in the ocean. There's just like That's a bunch horrifying. of Pegasus like flying That's, through a flock of birds. That's just a horror show. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> So uh, this this chaotic nature they have paired with their intelligence makes the idea of like traditionally breaking and taming them pretty much impossible. Yeah. Um, in fact, uh, a Pegasus can only be persuaded into service by truly good aligned beings with noble intentions. OK. It's the only way they will accept like being ridden. Um, and this is very rare because it's also very important for a Pegasus because if they do this, it forges a lifelong bond and they'll probably be a companion for the rest of their lives to whatever oh, man. being they've decided to do this for. They got like the cow best friend thing. Going yeah, they got on. the cow best friend thing going on. So it's a big <laughs> deal for them. And they're not ready to just jump into a relationship. So, <laughs> so, I don't yeah. know, man. Do you tell me Bahamut told you to go? <laughs> All I right. Guess. All right. Hop on my back, dude. Let's do this. <laughs> That's too funny. So you, you basically uh, your odds are really bad. Uh, all the time, but all the they're time. slightly better if you're like a paladin or a cleric. Yeah, and it's specifically if you have like a really specific noble quest uh, that you need their assistance on. That's your best bet right there. <laughs> and even then, very low percentage chance. because my, my daughter's trapped in the well. We've got to get her out. It's like, I don't know, man. That doesn't know, sound man. like it's in it my quiet like line. You me. Maybe you need a regular horse. Yeah. It sounds like a more ground level thing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So uh, I got some fun facts here about Pegasi. Um, number one, they lay eggs and they build nests. 
So that is fun. Yeah, I thought that was a pretty fun. Lay eggs. That is mentally disturbing. It is mentally disturbing as well. (laughs) Um, They also have a hatred for griffins and hippogriffs. I mean, they're just they're predators, hippogriffs and griffins and uh, pegasi are herbivores. So, you know, they're prey. They will back kick a hippogriff. They definitely will back. Absolutely. Um, Even when tamed, pegasi reject the use of a saddle. You have to wear them, uh, ride them bareback. Uh, You can get on me, but can you? (laughs) Can you handle Can it? Can you handle it? I'm be jocking those nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Their lifespans average about 40 years. Um, although in the plane of Arborea, I don't think time passes and people don't age. So they're theoretically immortal there. Maybe. I'm not sure. I think that's so. like the gith. Yeah. It's like a lot of the outer planes where, mm-hmm. where time doesn't work the same. Um, cool. They are herbivores, which you asked earlier. They eat primarily grass and fruit, which is not quite the same as horses. Since not we know, a lot, not a lot of that in the sky. Not a lot. Of, yeah, <laughs> not a lot of fruit or, or grass in the sky. I wonder if they're like going along. They're flying along like cliff sides and landing and like mm-hmm. eating those shrubs that are like growing out of the sides of yeah. Like I think def- and shit. definitely that, That's but cool. also it's That's very cool it's stated very much in the lore that like the only time they ever land is to come down to eat really quickly and then go back into the sky. Uh, so yeah, you know what they're doing then? What? Shitting while they're flying. Oh God, it's so like true. Like pigeons, isn't it? <laughs> like Aarakocra. <laughs> I think it's distinctly possible. Except but it's much much cleaner. It's more like horse poop. So you just hit with like get hit with like this dry pellet because it I just don't know. fell three thousand feet. A horse turd falling from a thousand feet might hurt. It probably hurt. It's yeah. gonna dry out. I think it's just gonna explode on your I shoulder. I think in a puff that of dust. being the inherently good creatures they are, Pegasi have the decency to have a spot that they go to. They just fly out over the ocean. So I was picturing them like a <laughs> cliffside, but the ocean is below, like crashing against the waves, and then they eat, and then they just fly off and shit real quick, and then they're good. I think that's yeah, that sounds. They're probably sound. on a really regular schedule with their bowels. Well, not too regular because they are remember chaotic, so they they try not to stick to a schedule. <laughs> I shit whenever, bro. Just whenever. The <laughs> but also, I try and be courteous. I'm a leaf it. in the wind. <laughs> Okay, moving on. Uh, so, oh yeah, I already said this. This was my last fun fact. It was the five percent chance of uh, birthing a full-grown Pegasus from the bleeding neck of a Medusa. That is like the fucking, you know, like a wild sorcerer like doing this yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's like real, just uh, those kinds of things happening in games. What a wild card. So, before we look briefly at the uh, the stat block for the Pegasus, do you have any quick questions? Uh, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> so the Pegasus stat block is actually really simple. It's only a challenge rating two, which I guess is fitting. But again, I'm going to say this for the thousandth time. I want my Pegasus Dreadlord. You know, I want my, I want my like super Pegasus, basically. Right. Uh, the one that like can speak telepathically and maybe knows a few spells and maybe is a challenge rating four or five. It has missile launchers. It has magic missile launchers in its wings. Yeah, like, like a, a favored steed of like <laughs> some I don't know powerful. You know, elven warrior from uh, Arborea. You know what I mean? Like, it just, I feel like there should be something like that. But, you wanna, anyways. You want a fighter jet with psychic powers. Exactly. So, the the Pegasus stat block has armor class of 12. Um, it had natural? It, <clears throat> natural armor, Pretty yeah. Good. I guess it's a little bit meaty. Um, 60 feet speed on ground, 90 feet speed flying. Um, it's pretty strong. It's got a 18 strength, a 15 deck, 16 constitution, 10 intelligence, 15 wisdom, <clears throat> excuse me, 15 wisdom and 13 charisma. So really wow. it's, it's got uh, some great stat array. That's like, better than some of the characters really I've rolled beast. on the show. I mean, it's challenge rating too. That's more than like, uh, uh, like two or three level ones can handle actually. Nice. Um, let me see here. It, like I said, it can understand celestial common Elvish and Sylvan, but cannot speak. Um, it only has one attack, hooves. <laughs> plus, <laughs> yes. Plus six to hit, uh, reach five, one target, 2d6 plus four bludgeoning damage. And that's another thing that I kind of like. Okay, yeah, obviously it can attack with its hooves, but I, I feel like it should have like a special like back kick attack or maybe like a wing. Um, a wing beat? A, a wing beat, I guess, yeah, where it can like push someone back with like a uh, blast of its wings just or something makes like a that. a wind box. Like, give me a little spice. Give me something to work with than just hooves. That's hard, dude. Like, it, I know. It's really like, yeah. you want like a tackle? <laughs> sky tackle? Sky well, attack. I think maybe a charge uh, feature or something would that, be kind of yeah, cool. I yeah, I think that would be cool. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah, obviously as a DM, I can just do that and I will do that and it, I do do that. Is so. hooves a multi-attack or is no, it just... Oh. No, it's just See, it should be a multi-attack because you can get, you can just like hover down on, on like a glide yeah. and get four of those bad boys in. It's so true. You know? I mean, also, but like back to tackle, can you imagine a Pegasus just flying above you and just letting itself drop onto you? That would like, be great. That's like 1,500 pounds. That's That will kill you. 
Just uh, that's more. It's definitely more potent attack than hooves. Just uh, homebrew a multi-class and monk and have it flurry of blows. There you go. All right. Well, with that being said, I think we can take our short rest. Yeah. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to the part of the show we're not talking about the last thing we're talking about. We're talking about this new thing. And uh well, I was I was brewing up a little potion. Oh, were you now? Yeah. And uh not just in a can and I, I did it once in a campaign, but this is outside of the campaign. Oh wow. And okay. I, I drank it and I fell in love. Oh, did you? Yeah. With who? Uh, our audience like three years ago. I never told you, but I slipped <laughs> yeah. some into your drink. Oh, that explains a lot. <laughs> and uh I think it gets through to the ears, indeed, and into the hearts of others. Yeah, it was very. It was our love is very infectious. I would say the scroll after I used it to make it just like fucking went up in flames oh, and gosh. almost burned down my whole house. Oh, but shit. it was like magic fire, I guess. I don't know. Worth it. Yeah, it was like some Mission Impossible <laughs> shit, but fantasy <laughs> style. Um, thank you guys so much for listening to the show. We really love and appreciate all of you. Um, Thank you to everybody that supports the show monetarily uh, via our Patreon. There's some specific people that have come in recently that may we may have shouted them out two episodes ago. We're but not sure. We're not sure because <laughs> Patreon's being super weird today. Because lists are hard. Yeah, it's like a, it's. Oh, but anyway, if you're getting a second shout out, it's because we love you more. Just kidding. It's not true. <laughs> we love you the same. We love you all the same. Uh, but thank you, Trey. Oh, man, I'm so tempted. <laughs> Trey, uh, Ma- Mick. Trey and Mick Lamore. Mick Thanks, Lamore. Trey. Macklemore. Uh, thank you, Corey Stark. Thanks, Corey. Cool <laughs> thank- last name, Corey. We definitely shouted you out last time, Corey, because I said exactly that last time. Oh, uh, well, you know, like we said, we love you more. Uh, <laughs> Tom, thank you, Tom. Thanks, Tom. David. Thanks, David. Thanks, David. They know who they are. Okay. But every Tom and David out there are like, did I? It was was my it cre- me? <laughs> did somebody steal my credit card? Uh, no. Uh, and thank you, Lundy Flo. I know we did shout Lundy Flo out. Thanks, Lundy Flo. Can't forget a name like that. Indeed, you can't. I can't forget any of these names. Yeah, well, you did, but. <laughs> no, no, I, no, I didn't. <laughs> okay. I see them all in my sleep every night. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see. They just kind of run through my, it's like I'm scrolling the Patreon list. I just can never recall them at this time. When Gosh, I need, when, when it when I, when it really matters and I really need the information, it fl- it fl- it's fleeting. It flies from me. <laughs> Like much like a thing that we were talking about before this part of the show. Indeed, indeed. Um, pa- changes coming up to Patreon. Um, all of you, uh, is it gold? Is gold ten? I always mix it up. I think Electrum is ten. Electrum's ten. Electrum yeah. is ten. <clears throat> if you're in the Electrum tier, F Bats is officially back, and there should Woo! be a new episode up by the time this. Uh, oh, the Patreon people are going to hear this tonight, and so this is true. So the day know. of the recording. Yeah. So well, th- no, there will be an, an, a new F bat soon for you guys, and there oh, is a new F bats when this airs on the normal schedule. Either way, F bats incoming. You get early episodes if you're in the silver Five, tier. Uh, yes, silver, silver tier. tier. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's a lot of people in there listening to the show early. Uh, there is two episodes at a time. Uh, what else? What else do we do? Twenty dollars tier, you get you get some merch. You, you get, get some, some really cool merch. merch, and every year you get a new thing. So, yeah. yeah, we won't talk about what that merch is because it's forbidden. Well, it's a mug. It's a very special mug. It's forbidden. <laughs> okay. um, let's see what else. What else are we doing? Um, oh, you can become an NPC. Oh um, yeah. Oh gosh. If you yeah, become the highest tier, well, there's a lot. There's, there's people. There doing are people it. in the tier. Yeah, and they're it, showing up. Yeah, and they are. And I am putting them in the campaign. Like, yeah. Of working them in is so difficult. I'll have like a plan for an NPC to be named after one of our patrons, and then you won't get involved with that NPC at all. I'm like, okay, well, that NPC's no name, and now this <laughs> name has to move to a different Let NPC. Me just rip this off here, <laughs> put it over. It's copy paste, copy paste. In, indeed. Um, th- if you get named as an NPC in Will's game, it's at your own risk. It is. <laughs> you might be. Tri- you might get murked. You might get murked horribly <laughs> because, like, the, some of our players don't necessarily see these lists of people that <laughs> by yeah. by some none, none yeah. of them see. Any yeah, of these Josh lists. and Jake don't don't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, they'll they'll kill you. They'll so, kill you. Uh, so yeah, come get killed on our show, <laughs> Super Quest Saga. Oh, <laughs> well, maybe not. You might be somebody cool. Indeed. You probably won't be though, considering how the game is going. <laughs> we were supposed this. We're getting off 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 topic. Indeed, but that's fine. Uh, you can check it out on YouTube or or the new podcast feed we have for Super Quest Saga. Um, I think that's it for Patreon. Let's get back. Let's get back to the show. Let's get back to the show. <laughs> All right. All 
All right, we've returned. We've returned. Yeah. Will, I'm sitting across from you. You Usually are. They sit like adjacent to you. I know. Like we got here. a whole new setup, and yeah, I'm, I'm like, actually digging it. It's working out really well on my end. I don't yeah. know about your end. I mean, but. it sounds good, and it, <clears throat> it, I mean, does it look good, guys? Let us know below. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Uh, my like our eyes are going to be looking in different places in the video. It's pretty funny. Yeah, I guess that'll be noticeable. Tell me more about horses, damn it. All right, so let's talk about nightmares. Uh, nightmares, D&D nightmares, have nothing in common with the real life mythological nightmares. Oh, yeah, and also not with the dream thing either. Um, <laughs> and instead, they are depicted as unearthly black horses with hooves wreathed in flame and whose mane and tails are made of fire. Uh, sorry, I, is it just a horse from Ghost Rider? Um, I guess so. Kind Looking of. at a picture of it, that you made a, a nifty thumbnail for a YouTube oh, thank page, you. and it's just a, it. it just looks like the horse from Ghost Rider. I I guess. <laughs> I guess I don't know. Le- a little <clears throat> less. Uh, okay, it kind of look. It almost looks like the Sleepy Hollow horse a little bit, but on fire. But on fire. Yeah. Uh, their eyes glow a malevolent red, and clouds of smoke tend to roil about these creatures, and their hearts are as black as their coats. That's cool. They're very evil. Is it like a thing to open up a um, uh, a nightmare after you kill it, like a like that thing from Star Wars, a Tonky? Uh, no. Uh, yeah. Why? Why would it be to get its heart? How do they uh, know yeah, what color maybe, heart yeah, is? actually, yeah, I could definitely see like a hag getting their hands on a nightmare heart and using that for a ritual. Please definitely. T- please tell me you know the name of the thing from Star Wars. Um. Oh gosh, I do, and it's not coming to my head right now. T something. Um. Ah, I can't. I can't remember I've been doing it right this now. A lot lately. Yeah. I know the name of this thing. Yeah, it, it'll, a tauntaun. Yeah, there we go. That's exactly what it's called. Yes. So, uh, but my brain was like, "You're right. We do know it. It's right this, here." But this isn't a Star Wars podcast, so let's move on. Oh yeah, no, it's um, not. So nightmares are wild and restless creatures that roam the world, doing evil and haunting the dreams of all who dare cross it. Oh God. So there is a little bit of dream lore there. Um, only powerful undead fiends or evil spellcasters can gain the service of a nightmare. Uh, nightmares themselves are fiends who hail from the outer plane of the Gray Wastes of Hades, oh, wow. uh, which, which is the neutral aligned outer plane um, of evil. Though they live throughout the lower planes in general, um, also the Shadowfell and even in the Prime. Uh, so yeah, they can kind of live all over. Uh, the Nightmares did not appear naturally in the universe. They were created via dark ritual applied to a captured Pegasus. Uh, this ritual is not spelled out, but it does include the tortured removal of the Pegasus's wings. Uh, um, regardless, the ritual turns the original Pegasi um, from good and induces a dark transformation into a nightmare. So That's some yucky. Yeah. Some lore does imply that nightmares can copulate with each other to replenish their population. But some lore explicitly states that all nightmares must be created via this dark ritual. Oh, geez. So, so there's just like pick you, choose. Like, <laughs> we got sky demons just like going and like trying to yeah, like capture these dudes. Yeah, yeah. Oh man. Yeah, absolutely. That's nuts. It's pretty, pretty nasty. Um, um, are its hooves uh, able to like make fire drills or like underground horses? That'd be like the, the completion of the opposite. It's like a ground horse instead no, of a sky horse. No, it's not. As a matter of fact, <laughs> even though they don't have wings, they can still fly. Oh, yeah. it's just they're jets. They're jets. Yeah, <laughs> they're just jets now. <laughs> It takes no, off like a fucking like, rocket. Obviously, it doesn't take off like that. They just like literally like ride into the sky, like a reindeer, like, like a reindeer. reindeer, more like a reindeer, less like a less like Iron Man. They, he just puts hooves on. He just puts horns on him, folks. He's just running around with a bunch of fucking death horses. <laughs> so nightmares have a fierce hatred for all living things, and due to the fact that they retain their high intelligence from their Pegasus days, they are not mindless creatures, but instead are ambitious and willful beings with their own dark agendas. Okay. Um. Yeah, even powerful masters of nightmares have a difficulty, difficult time with these creatures uh, as they have a tendency to do as they wish rather than follow orders. Okay, um, like uh, they're, it's keeping to a lot of the, the true nature of, of uh, the Pegasus. Pegasi. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, they pose... Uh, the, they pose a similar problem to like, let's say you have like a sentient weapon with an ego of its own. Mm-hmm. It's very much like what writing a nightmare is like. Okay. So it has an ego of its own and it has a very high opinion of itself. Right. Um, so these alliances between like, uh, I don't know, a, a fiend and a nightmare usually only work out when their goals align. With yeah, yeah, sure. So it's uh, it's like when two bad guys team up to to beat one good guy or yeah, vice versa. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So nightmares are famous for their multiple magical and spell like abilities. Um, the first being their immunity to fire damage and their ability to extend this to its rider. Oh, that's cool. It's pretty cool. Uh, nightmares are also known for their plane shifting abilities, specifically uh, ethereal plane shifting and astral projecting. They're really good at both those things. Wow, they nice. also are really good at tra- just traversing the planes in general. I bet it's uh, I bet it's astral projection looks like it like just a 
a fire horse. Yeah. Just like a fire, but in the shape of a horse. That's awesome. No, it, no, I understand that nightmares are generally like portrayed as very evil, but there's a really cool forgotten realms book called, um, breaking the chain, I think it's called. And it takes place in the shadow fell and the main characters are shadow Kai. And there are a couple scenes where he has, uh, multiple contacts with this singular nightmare. That's like roaming the shadow fell. And uh, he forms like this strange kind of bond with it, and it comes to his rescue when this night hag's like encroaching on him. Oh, nice! Like, he's like out there on the plains dying, and this night hag's like about to get his ass. And then the nightmare just shows up and scares off the night hag in a really cool scene. It's it's really dope. Hell yeah! And then he rides the nightmare back to the Shatterkai city. Cool. But back to back to nightmares. Um, uh, like I said, nightmares are still capable of flight despite not having any wings. Um, though they do not need to eat to survive, most nightmares devour the flesh of their kills. Ooh. Like, again, they are fiends. They are these evil creatures. They just want to. They just want to make it look good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they want you to know. They want visually to stimulate you to think. Yeah. E- about Remember, evil. I'm evil. I'm just doing this for fun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need this. I'm eating this man's chest like an apple. Okay, so. <laughs> So previous editions gave nightmares a fanged bite attack uh, that even did poison damage. Uh, they also used to have the ability to release a cloud of smoke and noxious vapors that can paralyze surrounding creatures. I don't know why they took this away. I would just add it back in. I do just add it back in. I like uh, I like fire and poison because like volcanic ash and stuff and like mm-hmm. like just smoke in general is like toxic. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's yeah, kind of cool, yeah. like poison in that way, not like my I have snake venom in my horse. Teeth. Right, right, absolutely. <laughs> I'm a vampire horse. That's cool too. Yeah. So uh, though the lifespan of nightmares, I couldn't find it stated anywhere. It is noted that they are not immortal and they do age and die, which is not like other fiends. Um, when a nightmare reaches the end of its life, it returns to Hades uh, to a place called the Hill of Bone. Um, there, among the bones of its ancestors, they choose to die. It said that some nightmares even arrange ahead of time if they die a kind of off world to have an honor guard come collect their remains to bring it to the hill of bone. Oh, wow. So, I Jeez. thought that was really cool. Yeah. yeah. Talking about ego. Yeah. Talking about ego. Um, I mean, that is, that is cool. I'm picturing, uh, I'm picturing like Palm Springs where people go to retire and there's a bunch of nightmares just playing golf. <laughs> on Bone so Hill. stupid. <laughs> on Bone Hill. Um, another fun fact, in Hades, there is a, um, I think every decade or every century or so, there's like this moot between all the evil entities of Hades, and announcing it is a herd of nightmares that just rampages through the plane. I'm sorry, what like, is a moot? So a moot is like basically like a gathering where like a bunch of peoples or leaders or whatever get together to talk about something, usually some sort of alliance or some sort of like problem in a region. Oh, okay. But in this fantasy terms, it's just a bunch of evil fiend type monstrosities getting together, talking about how they're going to spread their will of evil over the next century. So there's just like a nightmare parade before that? Is there, Yeah, there's like a nightmare stampede that uh, stampedes through the plains to announce that the mood has begun. There was this other cool way I imagine nightmares fly where they're instead of like jets, mm-hmm. uh, they make like a, a fire bridge that they're like laying out in front of them as they run. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. It would be really cool for two of them to mm-hmm. do to like do one and then you have like a like a whip made of fire that you like basically like skiing on the bridge behind them. Yeah, except Hell for yeah. nightmares would never let you do that to them. Mm, well, so. Are there people powerful enough to, to enslave the nightmares? Yeah, sure. Well, like yeah. Uh, a lich or a death knight definitely. Uh, so if a death knight w- rode a nightmare, it would just death pretty much bend to his tend to write nightmares. So they just bend to their this is like this is my for trust for the most seed. part, although I think a nightmare wouldn't mind serving um a death knight just because like He's death so knights <laughs> death knights hate all life, so do nightmares. Let's do this. <laughs> when the death knight does an evil thing with a nightmare around it like psychically is like you're so evil i love it i love it i love this shit get on my back i'm gonna make a fire bridge (laughs) you're the best yeah i could definitely see something along those lines so do you have any questions about nightmares before we get into the stats um oh well the stats i was gonna the stats will answer my remaining questions i believe okay well let's see if they do so um the stat block for the nightmare is a little bit more substantial than the Pegasus, but I do feel like it does leave a little bit to be desired. Like, I want my noxious vapors. I want my fang bite. I just think it's horrifying and cool. I mean, just like exactly like the Pegasus one is pretty much you had the same complaint. Yeah, basically. But at least the nightmare has a little bit more than hooves. Yeah, sure. So uh, the nightmare is a large fiend creature considered to be neutral evil, has a 13 natural armor class. Uh, they will wear barding and armor. Uh, they're not like the Pegasus. They're not snooty like that. Um, they're immune to fire. Uh, they understand abyssal common and infernal uh, but can't speak just like the pegasi but in mm-hmm. reverse um, confer fire resistance so nightmare can grant resistance to fire damage to anyone riding it 
Um, illumination, the nightmare sheds bright light and a 10 foot radius and dim light for an additional 10 feet. I mean, that's just because, you know, fire. Um, they also have a hooves attack. <laughs> okay. But their hooves attack does bludgeoning damage and fire damage, which I is knew really it. cool. Yeah. Because, like, why wouldn't it? They're just going to kick you and turn the jets on. Indeed. It has, um, a, it has a pushback of 10 feet. And then it has an ethereal stride. The it nightmare doesn't. the nightmare, and up to three willing creatures within five feet of it can magically enter the ethereal plane from the material plane or vice versa. So it's really simple. Let me see. What was the challenge rating on that? So challenge rating three. So it's only one Slightly challenge rating. Slightly more above. powerful than <clears throat> Pegasus. I just feel that Nightmares, I think three is probably fair. Anywhere between three and five would be fair for a Nightmare, I think. Um, I just, it, it could use just a couple other more interesting attacks. Homebrew it like a Clydesdale, you know? Yeah, Clyde, sure. Like, yeah. Just a beefy, beefy just horse. Just a really beefy one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I can definitely it's gotta see that. It's got to be a, like, okay, so if it was <clears throat> formed from a Pegasus, is it, what, I'm sorry, did we go over the size of the Pegasus specifically? Like, um, is it bigger I don't know than if a, we did, but no, they're about the same size as the horse with their wingspans being about 20 feet wide. Sure, sure. Which honestly, that, that wingspan isn't wide enough to carry that weight in like actual physics, so it has to be magically induced, it's I would imagine. fantasy physics. Bro. I know it's fantasy physics. I'm just saying, like, they weigh, like, 15, 1,600 pounds. They need, like, way bigger wings, but whatever. Well, they have really <clears throat> light, like, airy bones. I mean, they still weigh 15 to 1,600 pounds. <laughs> uh, I mean, it, maybe they're carrying their weight in, like, another plane. So I, I would say nightmares, nightmares probably weigh less because they don't have the wings. <clears throat> well, yeah, I mean... You remove you've literally removed, literally yeah. removed mass from I mean, the yeah. horse. There goes like fifty pounds in each direction. Easy. Yeah, it would, it would have to be. I mean, it's a lot of feathers. There's a lot of feathers. You can make a lot of pillows. A lot of bone. A lot of tendon. A lot of bone. A lot of tendon. A lot of stuff so, to put in your fuck. <laughs> with that being said, I think we can get ready for our long rest. Yeah, let's get ready for our long rest. And I think today we're going to talk about TDC plays. Yeah, before I go to sleep, I watch us play video games. Indeed. Yeah. And if you want to do that, you can go to TDC plays, which is our sister YouTube channel where we play video games. It doesn't have to be weird like before bed, but you, <laughs> you can do it anytime. And we are trying Whatever to get to a thousand subscribers. So if you can help us out and go over there and subscribe, we'd really appreciate it. It would be chill as hell. The link is in the description. And right now, I think we are in the middle of playing a Undertale. We're in the middle of playing Sonic Mania. And we just wrapped up our finale to Pokemon Heartgold Randomizer Nuzlocke. So find out if we died or if we succeeded. Yeah, there's a there's an ending. There's and an ending. It goes one way or the other. It does. You mentioned the link in the description. There's also a link in Zelda 2. There is. There is. <laughs> and, we, and I am doing that game uh, as well, but I haven't quite finished it yet. And uh, as I've been saying for a while, I have many plans. <laughs> right. Uh, they're coming to fruition <clears throat> within the next two weeks. Of uh, It has happened. It should have happened on the normal feed already. Mm. And episodes are being edited. Uh, let's see. What else do we talk about in the back end here? Uh, follow us on uh, Twitter at the Dungeon Cast and on Instagram, the Dungeon Cast. Uh, or email us at thedungeoncast at gmail.com. We have ad space open, blah, 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 um, feedback, yeah. et cetera. And if you like what we're doing here, uh, don't forget to leave a like and you know a subscribe here on this channel or uh, a review on iTunes or a comment below. Any of these things help. So I'm if you want to help support us in a non-monetary way, doing any of these things is really, really helpful. I'm not editing it in those fucking little arrows. No. So. Fuck that noise. <laughs> and with that being said... I think we could call it a game. Super Quest Saga on the YouTube we'll channel. We'll do that one next okay, episode. Bye. <laughs> bye. The Dungeon Cast. All right, I may record. I don't feel ready, but when do I ever fucking <clears throat> feel ready for this stupid show? By stupid show, I mean I love this goddamn show. <laughs> but still.